is going to be receiving an invite mail e email like this. Uh, this is our templated version. And so basically it has a variety of uh, bits of changeable information. So the name of the RFP, what type of RFP it is, uh, what the deadline is, what rate plan is applicable, although that's not, that is not usually, it's not handled in the same way for unlicensed hotels. It is much more of an indication of what type of rate you should be offering rather than a specific rate plan to you. So if it says client negotiated LRA, non LRA, then it's uh, an indication that you can offer both LRA and NLRA rate. And also the date range for which the rates are applicable. In the second section, we have uh, some bid information. Um, if you are a market lead subscriber, there is information on how to activate your individual market leads. That's applicable for both licensed and unlicensed hotels. Um, and then in the second section, we have bid completion. So there is uh, details about our services in there. Um, a copy of uh, the, this training session will appear here. So if you want to come back and refresh at any point, you'll be able to access a video of this training. Uh, documentation. Uh, this, this is our, uh, our RFP documentation rather than documentation that is specific to any RFP, things like room nights, that sort of thing. There is a link there so that you can find it. Um, a couple of co common problems, and if these are two of the more common problems that we have. Uh, user IDs and selecting rate plans uh, and then if you have any other problems obviously we're always able to help from the RFP at supranational.com email address um, and we also will list at the bottom uh, the email addresses to which any of these emails have been sent so that if you want to make sure that it's going to the right people you can see down there what is what go to the Okay, so I'm just going to log in. You should uh, should be all be familiar with this login screen. And then corporate transient and consortium. So this is the main overview screen. At the moment, this is set to 2016, which is the current year. There is a summary of what needs doing on the left-hand side. So we've got one new RFP to look at. Uh, negotiation requests, RFPs with updates. This is, and um, this has come in sort of much more in the past year or so. And what it actually deals with is when a corporation negotiates locally with a hotel, sometimes they will put a completed bid through Lanyon as accepted, uh, just so that they can incorporate it into their normal processes. Um, if you see that there's something here with updates to apply, it's usually an opportunity just to review the accepted bid to make sure that the things that were agreed during the local negotiation have been uh, reflect, uh, reflected, reflected correctly um, in the bid that has been set up by the corporation. And we do, um, we do stress that it is important that you do that because mistakes are made and you don't want to end up with rates loaded that were incorrect or amenities included that shouldn't be included. Um, tell you how many RFPs are due in the next seven days, and if you have, if you're a market lead subscriber, how many market leads bids you have. In the middle is the open RFPs, which detail corporate and consortia and the statuses in which they are in. So new, approved, negotiation requested, and then on the far right there is this, a, 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 a more uh, an overview of the RFPs that are complete. So with corporate accepted fines or fines by the hotel. Okay. Any questions so far? What I'm going to do is I will keep uh, everything else on muted. muted. Uh, but any questions so far? No. Okay, I'll carry on to the next bit then. So we'll have a look at completing this RFP then. So as we can see, there's account name here, Babu Archer, and if we click on that, you were able to see, a, this is a test account, so there are no documents listed, but if there
their Word documents, they would be listed in the bottom of this window. Uh, they would tend to be things like um, run nights, office locations, overview, uh, terms and conditions. So obviously, at least the terms and conditions are an important thing for you to review because when you complete a bid in Lanyon, it becomes um, it's a legally binding contract. So, would we like to participate in this RFP? Yes, no, view history. So we would choose yes because we've had a look through the documentation and we think that this would be a good RFP for our hotel complete. So, the first step is to say that you have read the account documents that you would proceed to creating a bid. So we can tick in that box. Um, there's no maximum run types, although the Lanyon system will limit you to three. There's no blackout dates allowed and there are no custom questions. Although I think there are custom questions on the RFP, so we will have a look and see. Let's a quick proceed. It should take us to the bid window. So here there are three tabs. Um, there will be a variety of number of tabs across the top here, uh, which will change on an RFP by RFP basis. Um, the majority of them are modules from the industry's RFP standard. So there is a standardized RFP that most RFPs use, and that RFP is split into modules. In the case of this RFP, two of the modules have been included. That's property basic and client specific. Then we have this third tab, which will always be the tab on the far right, which is review and submit RFP. That allows us to see what is on the RFP and to submit it. Bear with me one second. Sorry about that, I'm just having a bit of a problem here. Okay. Um, you'll notice immediately that in within the Module, a variety of questions are marked in red and others are in black. Red questions, as it says at the top here, are required. They're mandatory. So those are the minimum amount of questions that you will need to complete um, for the RFP to be processed. So if we have a look through, um, so property name, so Property address. Uh, property sales general email address. Let's just put in. Year the property was built. Set a number of rooms. Um, you'll see that some of these have automatically defaulted to answers, so it's always a good idea to check with these mandatory questions, uh, which uh, answer has been applied to them, just to ensure that they are correct. Um, we happen to know that these are all accepted, so we'll add those. Uh, and obviously, chain code and GDS property codes usually carry over from RFP to RFP. Uh, they shouldn't ever really need checking, but it is always a good idea to check. So you can see we've just left a couple of these blank because what I want to do is I want to save changes, then I want to move on to the client specific tab. And here you'll see the, the key thing to notice here is uh, the rate table. Uh, this, although this is not highlighted in red, it is of course mandatory to include um, some rate types. Uh, we'll also need to put in what the room types that we're offering are and how many of each of those appear on the property. So let's say we've got a standard room and we've got sort of 30 of those and let's say we've got a executive room and let's put in 29 of those. Okay. Drop out that third one. So the start date of the RFP is uh, again would be detailed on your 
invite email. It had the range that the dates are valid for. This one begins on the 1st of January 2016. Just drop that in. And ends on the 31st of December. So fill that, that in. So now because we've added two room types here, we will need to add two sets of rates for all of these available columns. Often there can be other columns in here. There'll be the two client negotiated ones, or at least one client negotiated one if they only accept LRA. And then there'll be a series of subsequent columns. Um, and they are comparison rates. So uh, a corporation may want to see what rates and how they compare with your LRA, non-LRA rate. Um, but let's just put some of those in. So let's say we offer 100 in here. And then for non-LRA, we get a bit of a discount because they're not getting the guarantee of large-term availability. Let's put this in for our government. And let's say that the 20 for each upgrade. So that's completing our rate table. That's actually easy. If you wanted to split these dates out, you can let's say that this stops on the one. 2016 uh, 04 01. This one, uh, let's find the real. So, say that goes to the 31st of March. This one then must start on the next day. So, this must start on the 1st of April. So, there has to be a continuous run of dates across these seasons without any gaps. Um, so I'm actually just going to take those out because we only want to have one season. And let's have a look. So there are, after the rates, there are the usual um, tax questions. So lodging tax, city tax, VAT, service fees, occupancy, and then we get into some of the more traditional amenities. So there are things like breakfast, fitness center, uh, and internet. See some of the red questions here. So property chain submits the information is correct and binding. So we'll say yes. And then here we have the start of the custom question. So what percentage of staff are bilingual? Let's say that 75% are. Uh, how many rooms are non-smoking? 59 for all of them. Does the hotel kitchen receive independent hygiene certification? So yes. So the local government agency does it. Uh, rather than the hotel industry or the hotel itself. So we'll put under next to, if so specify the organization, we'll put local, is the hotel a listed or protected building? Say no. And has your hotel ever been overrun by blue tongue stinks? Say no. It would be unusual for that to happen. And then we say changes. So we've been through each of the modules and we've looked at the red questions that have been set on there. Um, so let's just quickly go to the last tab and we'll be able to see if we have missed anything. So if we go to review and submit RFP, it will say that fields in red are required and that there are four errors that need to be addressed prior to completing this RFP and there's a display error. So if I click on the display errors link, it's going to show three of the four that uh, require Attention. So the first one is that there's no currency code included. So we're going to say DVP. Property location. So we have a variety of answers here for property location. They are airport, downtown, um, can't remember what F is. Uh, P is resort, R is residential, O and S is suburban. So we'll say that ours is a downtown because it's in the city center. And we'll say our changes there, and you'll see that those two errors disappear, and it's now saying one error needs to be addressed by completing this form, which is this one, which is the property description. So we'll say lovely hotel in the centre of London. I'll choose save changes again. Okay, so we're now at a stage where it says I've reviewed this bid with terms of permission, and we're we've got a chance to submit this bid. But actually, this is a new client for us, and so we want to focus on 
maybe giving them something extra that we wouldn't normally give to try and secure their business. So if we go back to client specific, let's say that we're going to include wireless internet for them and breakfast for them. So breakfast questions, I mean, if, if you want to find things and you're not sure where they are going to be on this page, you can press Control F and that brings up this little search window. And if you just put in breakfast, that will show us where breakfast fields are. So will you include breakfast in the negotiated rate? Say yes. Once you say yes, you need to assign a value to breakfast because a corporate will want to know what the value of the breakfast that you're including is. So let's say that normally breakfast is eight pounds. And then because you specify the breakfast, you will also need to specify what type of breakfast. We'll say that that is a full breakfast. And then if we want to include the wireless internet, we can just do the same thing again and find where it's wireless. We can see that it's just a few questions down at the 224 point. So, do you have wireless high speed internet connection in the guest rooms? We do. How many guest rooms have them? 59. So they've all got them. What is the average fee per day? So normally it's a few pounds a day. Uh, and is wireless guest high, uh, guest room high speed internet included in the negotiated room rate? I'd say yes. Um, it's always best to have a look either side of a question. So even though you're including it, you do need to answer these questions beforehand to specify what the, the value for it is and how many of them there are. Um, and it, often they're not always the same way around. So in this, in this case, the inclusion question comes last after the variable question. Whereas when we did breakfast, the first question is the inclusion question followed by the cost and the type of breakfast. So we'll scroll back down to the bottom of the page and we'll choose save changes. We now go to review and submit RFP. You can see that it says, doesn't say there are any errors. Um, but what we can do is we can scroll through the whole bid and we can just double check so we can see that our rates that we've put in are okay, our basic property information is okay, and that the things we might want to add in like breakfast and fitness, uh, breakfast, breakfast and Wi-Fi. So there's, uh, there's the breakfast questions and then of course the Wi-Fi is a bit further down. So we're happy with that. And we're going to tick this box to say we've reviewed the bid. And then we're going to choose submit bid and that will now send the whole bid off to the account. Um, you will not, because this is a test account in our domain, this does actually say something different. So because this is not really going to an account that says that you've got to follow these directions, you will you will not have to do that. Um, all of the RFPs that you will normally receive will be automatically sent to the client. Um, if it looks like this, uh, you should screen capture it and send it to us and we'll have a look at it because obviously you shouldn't be in a situation where you are answering RFPs that are not direct. That's uh, that's something that only affects writing. And that is essentially how we do it. So let me just unmute everyone. Um, does anyone have any questions? No? If nobody has any questions then, I would say that we've done with this. Okay, well, thank you for coming. Um, I hope that that's been useful. As I say, there will be a link to the recording of this in, uh, available from all of your invites. If you want to come back and check something, you'll be able to do that. Um, otherwise, I look forward to a productive RFP season. Okay. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Bye-bye.